As you might hope and expect, Ferrari isn't messing around when it comes to e-motors with its new Electrica. There will be four. We think total power will exceed around 750 kilowatts and doing the majority of the heavy lifting is this rear axle. Ferrari has employed more state-of-the-art when it comes to the motors. Um, and remarkably, this unit beside me is the rear axle. And I say remarkably because this produces an incredible 620 kilowatts of power. That's massive. And that's because Ferrari has developed from scratch by itself, not one, but two rear motors. There's one there and there's one there. Now in between is the transmission and at the top, is an inverter. Now they're both using permanent magnets and that's because Ferrari just wanted the most amount of power and torque possible in the smallest amount of space. But there's more cool stuff as well because um, there's no actual physical connection between the two motors and that gives Ferrari some quite remarkable amounts of torque vector. You can have 100% to zero, 50-50 split and it also means that the new Ferrari Electrica will drift like an absolute demon. I haven't been told that, but that's what I'm predicting. Now, more trick stuff is we've mentioned the transmission here, but there's some really nifty tech which looks just under there. Now, I can't show it to you because we'd have to tear it apart, but basically Ferrari wanted a, well, a purest sound experience. So what they've done cleverly is there's an accelerometer that lives down there and it kind of acts like a pickup for a guitar. So the sounds both of these twin motors are making down here, well, it's replicated within the cabin. Now, obviously there's some extra trickery. Some of the frequencies are sort of dialed out, so it won't be annoying, but it won't sound like a V8 or a V12. And that I think is a good thing. I'm a little bit worried it might sound like a CVT, but Fry says that is definitely not the case. You've got to admire them for doing something a little bit different. Now I'm sure you'll agree, a battery module beside me isn't quite as sexy as a thumping V12, but in the case of the Ferrari Electrica, this is vitally important because it's the technology that is involved in this tiny small unit here that will give the Electrica its advantage over its rivals. Now the headlines for this battery, this is one of 15 that will be in the production car, is it produces an energy density of 195 watt hours per kilogram. Now that figure is important because Ferrari claim it's literally the best in the class. There's no other electric car out there that has a battery as energy dense as this one. I think Xpeng have a battery that's around 175 watt hour, but Anyway, so that means as well as energy dense, it's also gonna be lighter than the opposition. And in fact, Ferrari claimed the curb weight of the new Electrica will be around 2,300 kilograms. Now the battery that's gonna go into the production car will be 122 kilowatt hour, and that should provide for a range of around 530 kilometers. Now more things you need to know about this battery is just the sheer work and development that's gone into it. And remarkably, almost all of it is done by Ferrari. In fact, this module is actually built in a building very close to where I'm standing right now. And that explains why it's got some really nice castings here, because again, Ferrari did it. And the cell itself is, well, if you're a geek like me, it's a bit of a work of art because within it, there's around 14 different cells. And the importance to this battery is it's just got this really trick cooling and that enables it to be just so energy dense otherwise the whole thing would overheat. Anyway charging speeds Ferrari says it can be charged up to around 350 kilowatts and if you factor in an 880 volt electrical system we think a 10 to 80 percent charge will take around less than 15 minutes so seriously impressive stuff and all the more remarkable that Ferrari did it all by itself.